Hello, I hope this video finds you well. Tonight we're going to look at big diff from list2, and this is the Python solution. The problem states, given an array length one or more of ints, return the difference between the largest and the smallest values in the array. They have a little note here about a nice built-in function, and that's called the min and max function. And these functions work that if I pass two values in, it will return the min or the max, depending on which one you use. And we'll see that in the answer. So if we look at our first example here, we have this list, we see the largest value is 10, and the smallest value is 3, and so I return 7. In the second one, we see the largest value is 10, the smallest value is 2, and 10 minus 2 is 8. And the final one, the largest value is 10, the smallest value is 2, and 10 minus 2 is 8. We're going to do this problem three ways. The first way I'm going to, the first way I'm going to do it is really about learning and understanding. It highlights a couple really important features. And the other two ways are really fast and kind of highlight some ideas around reference variables, which if you've been following along, you'll have heard me talk about a couple of times. Okay, so essentially all we're going to do with this first approach is we're going to loop through and look at every element, and we're going to find the largest and find the smallest. And then once we're done, we're just going to return the, the difference. And here's a really big idea. When finding the largest or smallest values, always initialize the largest slash smallest to an element in the list. This means you don't need to know anything about the list values. Let me show you an example. If nums happen to be this, where all the values are negative, and if I set largest to zero, which is a common thing for people to do, um, we're going to end up the largest with, with largest since all values are less than zero. So zero will stay the largest, and it's not in the list. So a really big takeaway here is if we make a variable, we always set it to an element in the list initially. It doesn't matter which one. Because, you know, worst case scenario, I've happened to pick the largest and I've happened to pick the smallest. In this situation, I can do this without worrying about the length because we know the list is length one or more. And now I just write a simple for loop for i in range 0, comma, len nums 1. And again, this is what I call my bread and butter algorithm. And I simply say largest is equal to, and this is where I use that max function max, and I'm going to pass it the current largest, and nums at i. And smallest is going to equal min, comma, smallest, and nums at i. And that means once I've gone through this entire list, using this for loop, I have now the largest and smallest value, and I can return the largest minus the smallest, and there it is. Now one real caution here, um, sometimes students will do this, is they will set this to max, and they'll set this to min, and then they'll hit go, and they get this weird problem. Um, Python's really picky with this. There's a function called max, so if you write max, it thinks of the function. Stick with largest, stick with smallest, um, and it will always work. Okay, so now let's look at the second way of doing this because I always have people jump on my channel and they provide some really good ideas and they say well just do this simple one line and let me show you a really quick way you can do this well it turns out there's this lovely instance method called sort and if I do nums.sort what that will do is that will sort the list nums and now you might say well wait a second it's not returning anything and that's true so let me just show you something here if I return nums which is obviously wrong I get the lit nums but sorted so see here's our list and then there's our list when i return it so this is actually sorted nums and this is a reference variable at play because i am accessing this method with an implied object any changes actually affect this list so i have to be really cautious here because if i do this i just have to be aware that nums is no longer the same it makes no impact on coding bat but for our purposes if we're using this in a more complex project we'd want to be aware of that. But the beautiful thing about this is when I sort it, the first element's the smallest and the last element's the largest. So I can just take the difference of the length of nums, minus one, minus nums at zero. So I'm just going to take the last element, which is this, minus the first element, and there it works. And there's our second approach. Our third approach is really nice because it also respects the reference types. Because remember, if I have a parameter which is nums, which is the list, I want to be very cautious if I go and change that list or not, because those changes will kind of will carry forward after the function's done. Turns out that 
Python is really convenient in this way. If I just return this, if I just return the max of nums, look what happens. I always get the largest value in the list. It turns out that max is an overloaded function, meaning that it has many different versions that can be distinguished based on the parameters. If I pass it two integers, it just finds the largest of those two. If I pass it a list, it finds the largest value. So I'm just going to return the max nums minus the min of nums. And there we go. So I hope this video helped. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a great day.